Well, Ross Douthat's a new book called Bad Religion, How We Became a Nation of Heretics, is certainly the most talked about religion book of 2012. Douthat, you know, is a New York Times uh, op-ed columnist. And uh, he's been on uh, every show, I mean, from the 700 Club to CNN to uh, Bill Maher's Real Time to talk about this, uh, this rather extraordinary and very insightful book. The central thesis of which can be stated very uh, simply, namely, that institutional Christianity in America is certainly in disarray and decline. However, most Americans remain pretty religious. And his interpretation is, most Americans, therefore, are Christian heretics. That means they've adopted some form of religion that borrows extensively from Christianity, even as it uh, undermines or perverts the uh, substance upon which it's parasitic. In other words, like you know, the Manichaeism of the 4th century or the Gnosticism of the, of the 2nd century, corrupt or perverted forms of Christianity. That's what we have now in America. Well, he looks at a number of these, and uh, the first two are ones that I've talked about actually a lot on, on other videos, namely the God within uh, religion. The God of the Bible turned into a sort of Emersonian oversoul or, or the, the truest, you know, deepest uh, self. You see it, for example, in much of Oprah Winfrey's uh, work in her television show. You see it in a lot of the feel-good writing of Deepak Chopra. You certainly see it in a novel like uh, Eat, Pray, Love, you know, where you're, you're told to honor the God who's in you as you. The other one he puts his finger on is uh, the prosperity gospel, which simply identifies uh, Christian salvation with something like material success. Um, and that's, of course, very widespread on TV and in the, in the wider culture. Um, in both cases, the case of both these uh, heresies, you'll find people who uh, draw attention to Christianity. So, for example, uh, Joel Osteen is one of the great advocates of prosperity gospel. He's the son of an evangelical preacher and, and even puts himself forward as a, as a Christian uh, evangelical. Or, you know, Oprah, Chopra, and there are many disciples very often cite the New Testament and Christian inspiration. So they qualify, if Douthat is right, and I think he is, as basically Christian um, heresies. Okay. Well, since I've, I've spoken already a lot about those first two, I want to draw attention to a third that I think he very deftly puts his finger on, and that is the tendency to simply identify the kingdom of God with the American uh, cultural and political status quo. That America somehow is the bearer of the great uh, biblical promise, that America is, if you want, the, the chosen country. He draws our attention to um, Glenn Beck's rally just of a little while ago. Glenn Beck, of course, the conservative uh, political commentator. And he has a rally in Washington where he rather clearly blends um, American idealism with a sort of biblical uh, eschatology a reading together of the biblical hope for the kingdom and the American uh, political and cultural ideal. Obviously, Beck is, is uh, similar to George W. Bush, who um, very often invoked the American ideal as fundamentally the same as the biblical ideal. Some of the American system of, um, of freedom and human rights and so on was God-directed. Uh, and th this wasn't... Um, just an abstraction is proved by the fact that Bush sent uh, tanks and guns and troops into an Iraq that was really unprepared for a democratic reform and tried to impose that through you know, military force. It's just that kind of uh, uncritical identification of the biblical vision with the American ideal that Douthat identifies as a heresy. Now, to be fair, this is by no means the exclusive preserve of conservatives. Go back to the beginning of the 20th century, and someone like Woodrow Wilson certainly had that kind of eschatological Americanism, if I can put it that way, that sense of the American political ideal as the one that should um, you know, have its way all over the world. Now, the fact that uh, Wilson couldn't even get his own Congress to pass uh, the, um, or rather to accept the League of Nations, his kind of pet idea, and the fact that within 20 years of Woodrow Wilson, Europe is once more plunged into a world war proves the kind of utopian character of his dream. Now, go forward from Wilson a bit, you have a figure like uh, John F. Kennedy and all that kind of inspired language of the new frontier. Look at LBJ, his successor, and the great society language. I mean, all that 
if you want, is the liberal version of this American um, heresy. Now, here's what I think is really interesting, and this is what, what Douthat uh, brings out, I think, rather well, is the clear biblical sense that no political or cultural arrangement can ever simply be identified with the kingdom of God. Even as we say, as I would indeed say, that the American system is relatively benign. I would indeed say that. I think we can celebrate it. Nevertheless, it's not identical to the kingdom of God, which is always the work of God's grace and not an achievement of economic, political, or cultural uh, reform. And he draws attention to um, that great quote from John Winthrop, who was the uh, colonial leader back in the early 17th century. And Winthrop's famous sermon, A Model of Christian Charity, in which he used that phrase that's been invoked by politicians uh, ever since, including most famously Ronald Reagan recently, of the city upon the hill. He was telling his fellow colonials, we're building a city upon the hill. Now he's drawing that from Matthew 5, you know, and, and the city that's that everyone can see, but it's not to be interpreted as a one-sided celebration of what we're doing. Just the contrary. If you read the whole sermon, he's implying that because we're building a city on a hill, namely one that will be watched all over the world, we've got to be hyper careful that our experiment in ordered liberty does not devolve into uh, dysfunction. We must be hyper aware of our own sinfulness and tendency towards sin because we're a city upon the hill, you know? It's not a one-sided idealism, it's a call to moral responsibility. The second example that Douthat um, identifies and I find fascinating too is uh, Abraham Lincoln's famous speech. It's just before he was inaugurated as president. He's um, in New Jersey in front of the state assembly and he's talking about his upcoming um, administration and he uses this line, I'd like to read it uh, word for word. He said, I shall be most happy indeed if I shall be a humble instrument in the hands of the Almighty and of this his almost chosen people. It's typical of Lincoln, isn't it? Uh, that, that brilliant insight of carefully crafted. Lincoln certainly read American history in light of divine providence. There's no question about that. You see it in speech after speech. But here he's saying America is not simply the chosen people. That would be this Americanist heresy. We're simply identical to uh, the chosen people of the, of the city of God. We are an almost chosen people, which means we always stand under judgment. We always stand in need of reform. Our system, with its great strengths, and I acknowledge those, is never simply identical to the city of God. Um, I think it's an important lesson as we approach July 4th, our great national holiday on which we legitimately celebrate our country, but also to be aware that there's a danger of patriotic jingoism, but more deeply of a corruption of Christianity, this Americanist heresy.